yeah okay uh good morning class now let me actually start with uh, today's uh present uh, today's feedback today's class will be first is where we talk about the feedback session that we have okay feedback session that we have for the case analysis that you all did last week and i did give back as i said i did, did you all know that you've already got back your papers with the comments with the marks okay and the marks are also there on the database it's been it's uploaded now let me actually just get, talk about the the feed the answers a little on the answers okay and now what basically before i go individually with all the answers now what happened was like there were not few not all okay most of you it you were able to relate it there were some of you when you had given me a general answer i could understand that you know about that topic but the main thing what i what was needed was how do you relate these concepts these points whatever reasons whatever your arguments with the case there were a few of you where you have given me a general answer right so that's where you lost your marks if you give a general answer that has nothing to do that has nothing to do with the case and you have seen that i've written in some of your copies how is this related or this is a general answer how do you relate it you need to be specific or some of you what you've done is you've taken up one reason and elaborated on that started elaborating and defending that reason and that's also i've said that that you've given me only one reason and one argument and given your reasons to defend that argument so these were some of the some of the mistakes that you had and some of your answers where i did write about restructure or rephrase where it didn't mean make any sense to me you were writing it but the way you wrote it was so so confusing you need i mean right i told you right short sentences short sentences so that it's easy for people to understand okay because you have to remember all these assessments that you are doing we are keeping a track we are all piling it up and it has to be shown to the external examiner when the external examiner comes it will be all shown these are evidence right so you cannot just write anything and uh, anything what you are thinking i know you are you are thinking something but when you are writing it you need to be very careful with that because it will give a wrong impression to the external examiner that your teacher has not taught you it talks bad about me as a teacher it talks bad about you so why would you want people to have a bad opinion or bad notion about you you are good all of you know because but you just have to know how to write your answer short sentences short simple sentences which is easy for all to understand okay this was this was some of the things where i said and i did write there also for some of you there are grammatical errors right because it just you know what happens when you start writing mixing it up with present tense and past tense the meaning totally changes it totally changes and then everything gets messed up it get just gets messed up the meaning changes so these were the these were the basic areas where um, you lost marks and there were few few who did not try it oh, there were some who did not complete the paper there were some who did not write all the you, you did not complete your answer it was half half and half and i did write there only one point is there you did or you did not explain all the points all the reasons so it it has been said also you must some of you was, uh, must have seen in your copies where i've written it so these were the things where you lost marks okay uh okay now let me actually start discuss the first question that you had your question which was there which said that do you think yahoo had the right kind of organizational structure design and you need to depend your answer with the help of four reasons right so it's up to you it's an open ended question 
it's up to you read it and think it could be either yes or it could be no okay it could be yes or it could be no whatever you feel but if you feel that it is right that over the yeah who did have the right kind of organizational structure you have to give reasons why do you think so not talk of different types of organizational structure some of you did say this i don't want to listen about the different types of organizational structure i want to know about yahoo whether yahoo had the right kind of organizational structure if you say yes why do you say yes what are your reasons to defend that that which says that okay yahoo did, did have the organizational right kind of organizational structure if you say no that okay like most of you had actually told me no because you were saying that virtual organization you spoke about virtual organization some of you too spoke about matrix organization so actually if you see yahoo has a virtual organization it's not mat matrix it's virtual organization that they have okay if you actually look into yahoo's uh, background the background of the company because they have experts in sitting in different parts of the world who are not there when the work is going on and quite a lot of you have actually written about virtual organization so if you feel that yahoo did not have a virtual or a right kind of virtual organization structure you need to tell me why you felt so don't tell me that in a virtual organization people are uh, it's difficult to communicate to people that's a general answer did it really happen with yahoo you have to tell me that right you felt and you have to there are there are evidences there in the case if you read the case you feel from certain points are very much evident in the case certain points you have to read and understand and you were allowed to refer to any other references any other source so you can refer to it and if you feel that no they did not have the right kind the virtual organization is uh, was not the right thing it it affected so you why do you think it affected so you just have to your answer should be with respect to the company whatever your reason will be because it's an open ended question and there's nothing called right or wrong here as long as you are able to defend yourself you've scored marks i've given you marks okay now the second question which says that suggest and evaluate four measures that could have been brought about in the existing leadership style in order to prevent the failure of the company okay now existing leadership style i don't i did not ask you to write about when you start saying that what uh, the solution is you started giving me that it should be deli one for delegative it should be participative it should be and then you started defending say someone some of you wrote say uh, i uh, say delegative uh, or democratic style of leadership and then you give me four reasons why democratic style of leadership is good that is only one of the reason where you said democratic style okay so that is not what i said that was only where for those students who wrote about like this i did say that it is only one point that you have written where are the other three points just one point is explained you've given me one point and some arg and arguments to defend that point that you said democratic style some said delegative style and you gave me four reasons why delegative style is important that is not the thing existing leadership style of yahoo which was autocratic at that moment so what changes could have been brought about in that existing leadership style what was happening it could have been a combination like autocratic in some cases some cases dele delegative so it can be a combination it can be any or it could be like some of you did say that of course taking the feedback of the employees right so letting them also participate in this uh, participate in um, in decision making so these were this is this is right of course and some for some you of course you wrote that in the it could have been like a uh, where you gave me with reasons that uh, uh yahoo could have followed situational leadership because or in which cases in these cases it could have been a situational leadership where it would have helped so 
I mean, the way you need to defend yourself, the way you wrote, that's how you scored your marks. Okay. Again, there's no definite answer to this. You cannot just say, okay, these are the answers. There's nothing beyond this. Of course, there is something beyond how you think about it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the third thing that came up was if you were the CEO of uh, Yahoo, what probable changes you would have brought about in the motivational plans for the long term sustainability? Motivational plans comes under employee, employee motivational plan. Okay. So, which is why you remember for some of you, I did write when you wrote uh, your reasons, I said, how is this related with motivation? you talking of customers look into what customers need customers demand customers taste and preferences how is that related to motivation motivation is with employees so what my the question was what problem what changes would you like to bring in in the motivational plan so that what happens long-term sustainability means your employees stay with you the rate of turnover decreases like most of you again have written the right thing you have given you understood where you've written you spoke about saying that rewarding your employees where you spoke about saying that uh uh taking uh the, your employees feedback because they are the ones who are actually interacting with people so you did talk about all these things so that this this is basically what basically the things that come about with it has to relate with the employees okay and of course some of you did talk about self motivation so be a role model for the employees and uh, and set the example of self motivation so that what happens employees should can also be self motivated so this some of one i have seen a couple of students actually writing this point also so these are some of the things which is there okay now comes up the fourth question which says that uh, do you think the company had the right kind of perception towards the changes in the market perception is comes from the word perceive how you look into things of course they did not have the right kind of perception that is that is true they did not which is why yahoo failed now most of you again gave me your answers which were related to the question and it was I gave you marks for that where so most most of you have spoken about uh, about Google Yahoo not buying Google Yahoo not buying the Facebook and also like talking of the search engine okay they ignored search in the uh, the kind of importance of search engine at that times then they also you have failed to come up with proper decisions where you explained it that which was needed at that time make a right decision because things were changing at that time okay so these again were some of the things that came up like some of the answers which you have and the last question that came up was what could be according to you could be the four probable reasons for yahoo to lose the opportunity to be leader in the search engine search engine platform right uh again the main thing that came up was what was happening they were actually taught uh, concentrating on what they were thinking of becoming the giants in the so they were talking about social media right and uh, instead of uh, talking of the search engine they also uh, the answer the, there's another thing which came up was they they did not uh, buy yahoo uh, facebook at that time that uh, that was an opportunity at that time okay google buying of google that was another problem that came up and what was happening at that time so they were actually focusing more on media online online advertising instead of actually looking into search engine for which they were like they were leading at that point of time and which is because they neglected so what happened was if they lost to google that's why google is today leading instead of yahoo so these are some of the, the some some of the points that we have, and uh, most of you have also written it, and some of you gave me uh, some additional points which also made sense. So where I did give you marks, so it was nothing like uh, 
right or wrong again i'm saying it's basically what you've written whether you've been able to defend yourself whether it made any sense or not okay uh, any questions on this does anyone have any questions no ma'am okay so if you do not have a question what we'll do is we'll start with unit 6 today right so i'll start uh, let's we'll do a little small uh, not much but uh, small little uh, little bit of it we will start working okay right okay just a moment please right so our first unit today's unit when we have is we have unit 6 which is workplace power politics and leadership okay now uh, the first thing that comes up is power what is power power basically when we say is it's when someone is able to influence others influence others to such an extent that they actually change their behavioral pattern if you are able to influence someone the person may be right person may be you see for example right if you are you have so much influence on me like i get so impressed by you that i change my behavioral pattern my behavioral pattern my, maybe i i'm right but i got so much influence by you that i started changing my behavioral pattern that turned out could be turns out to be bad also but you have that much capacity to influence me so that capacity to influence me that's called power the degree to which you can influence someone else's behavior is called power okay uh, so what happens is basically it says that someone can have power but may not be able to use it may not be able to use it why you have that power but because power when we say it is your capacity or the potential to influence others you have that talent within you but you cannot influence others people are afraid of you but they are not convinced with what you are saying you are not able to convince them so that they change as per your likings as per your dislikes that that's why i said you have power but you do not have you may also happen that you may not have the capacity to actually change someone's behavior and more the number of uh, more the degree to which people start depending on you starts changing their behavior or pattern more is the power okay so more is the power where there is more level of dependence it's a positive relationship that we have okay okay now the next thing that comes up is like how is leadership different from power we started leadership now we talk of power so it seems quite to very much related but what it basically is the thing and when we talk of leaders right they are using power why to attain the goals of the organization they're using their power but when we talk of power power is not about achieving goals it's mainly to ensure people start depending upon you people start following you whatever you say people start changing their behavioral pattern that's what it is leaders leadership is when you actually use your what are uh, your capacity to actually achieve a goal you lead people but when we say power it is not about talking about any achievement of goals but it is about ensuring that people start depending upon you they start actually doing whatever you say now the second thing that comes up is when we talk of leadership it is talking about downward influence on followers it's one way right you should have followed like you are just giving orders directions people are following it so it doesn't talk about the upward relationship upward relationship is where we talk of two way communication that is not leadership neither does it talk about relation importance about lateral when we say lateral we are talking of horizontal it's not leaders has to be someone above you not at the same level whereas when we talk of power 
it has nothing to do with it even someone who is not so who is your subordinate can have power at that moment for and can influence you you may be totally depend upon that person at that time say for example what happens is suppose you in when you're working in an organization right your organization you're working and that is for instance something happens and your boss is totally lost doesn't know what to do at that moment there's some emergency nobody is able to help out you suddenly say you know how to help it out and you say okay i can do this so what is your position you're below your bosses but you have the power at that moment you have the capacity to people are totally dependent upon you so power has nothing to do with your position or it has nothing to do whether you are at the same level it has nothing to do with it whoever has the capacity to make people start depending upon that upon them that's what power is okay now when we talk of leadership it actually uh, looking for answers to some question that is how supportive should a leader be how to what extent should a leader start uh, supporting their employees okay and how much of the decision making should be shared with these followers or the employees should all the decisions be shared should some be shared so these these are the things the crucial things we are talking of crucial things but whereas when we talk of power it's basically talking of the mechanisms to uh, to ensure that people start trust people start obeying you compliance means to obey it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong it has nothing to do so it is nothing to do with us it as an individual okay it's not an individual who is exercising power because it can happen that groups as well as individuals can have power to control other groups other individuals it can be anyone it has nothing to do with that okay so let, let's talk about the next thing the this is the last thing that we're going to discuss today the sources or bases of power okay we are going to talk today only the first part right coercive power reward power and legitimate power these are the three things that we i'm going to talk discuss with you today so the power now sources of power can be of two types one is formal power other is personal power okay now when we talk of uh, formal power formal power is based formal we say it's based on someone's position in the organization that's formal power it comes from the person's position and which is why you can actually force people to do the work so we see that there are three types of formal power coercive power reward power and legitimate power okay uh let's discuss each of these things the first is the coercive power coercive means to force force how because you create a fear fear in the minds of your subordinates that if you do not do this work so what's going to happen there will be like that uh, what were the your subordinates have the feeling that oh my god if i fail if there's a negative results coming then what will happen if i fail to do, do the work there'll be some punishment coming up punishment coming up so there is threat threat comes up so that's the fear so you fear of not able to fulfill the work right and so you actually out of fear you do what your bosses are telling you right so what happens what can be that fear that if you fail to do the work you can be dismissed thrown out of your job you can be suspended or you can be demoted also so if that is happens then what happens it's quite embarrassing right if you are thrown out of the job if you are suspended if you are demoted so if your boss tells you all this if that force comes oh you, if you do not do this if you fail to achieve this i'll throw you out and the entire organization will know so out of that fear and that that is quite a unpleasant environment it's quite embarrassing any it's embarrassing for any employee so that's what happens so out of because of that fear you will start working that see okay i i need to do this work so that it doesn't become a problem i am retained i uh, people do not laugh at me okay so that's what coercive power is next comes up is the reward power it's just the opposite 
effect of coercive power, which says what happens if people are abiding, your employees are abiding by what you say, they're giving you a positive result, what happens? So you start distributing the rewards with them. You start rewarding them. Rewarding in what sense? Increasing your pay. It could be giving bonuses. It could be also some uh, pro promotions happening. Then you are given better work assignments. So what happens? You get to have work with friendly colleagues, right? And you are also given your preference for the work shifts or where you want to work, the territories, the sales territories. So this is again that comes up. So what happens? Like, you know that if you do this work, if you achieve it, you get a bonus. So you are actually working to get that reward. And or sometimes if you worked over, over time, you're working day, uh, day and night. So what happens? Like your bosses say that you get a holiday, a weekend. This is your week. The paid leave that you're getting. So because of the good job, you've been working so much, so you get say five, over one week's holiday. So this is how it goes. You're being rewarded, either financially or non-financially. Okay. Now the question that comes up is, what are the advantages of reward power? Okay. Now reward power, main thing that comes up is employees. They It encourages employees to work hard. You know there's a reward coming for you. That's that becomes that's a more uh, sort of motivation. You all have studied motivation, so it's a sort of motivation. What can also come up is it helps you to become loyal to your organization. Why? You know that if you are really putting in extra effort, your effort is recognized and you are being rewarded, either financially or non-financially. So loyalty comes up. You like this organization. Okay, but what happened? There's another thing. If reward is given to only some employees, certain group of employees, not to all, that who's been really doing well, that also helps in creating a healthy competition. Competition, why? Amongst the employees, that who would achieve that reward? Someone has done well, that's also a competition. Oh, oh I missed that chance by 0.001 percent next time i will be the employee of the month i'll do best so that's a healthy competition coming up and that actually helps you as an employee to grow it helps the organization to grow and as i said rewards when you have rewards it helps in retaining right you it helps in reta retaining now what happens retaining in the sense because uh, uh, some rewards say for instance in organizations if, uh, if you work in an organization where your organization gives you an option to hold shares, shares of the company, that if you're really doing well, progressively well, you will be allowed to buy some shares, hold shares. Everyone cannot hold shares, right? Shares of the company means you have a say in how the company runs. You become a shareholder. So everyone cannot have that facility, get that that opportunity so when you have these sort of things and what happens you you will feel okay i don't want other other opportunities are coming but i do not want to go there why because I, here in my present organization i'm a shareholder and i do have a right to say how things are working how things should go what can what should be done what should not be done i can influence even the my bosses because you are because i'm a shareholder Shareholders have that right to say. Okay. Uh, now, again, the other thing that comes up is, so suppose if the reward is given to an entire team, if they achieve an objective, then what happens? That teams are working and they say, okay, if the team achieves the target, everyone will be rewarded. So, which means what happens? Each and every member in the team would be working, helping each other, Good bonding comes up, good teamwork comes up to achieve that goal. Everyone would be working, seeing that they achieve, that they are working individually as well as in a team. Because it's a team effort, because if one fails, that means the entire team fails. And everyone, nobody would want that to happen. So the bonding comes up. Okay, the next thing that comes up is when we talk of the disadvantages, right? So we are talking of disadvantages of reward. Uh, 
Now, what happens is if you give, if you have a business, and if you start giving the same reward over and over again to your employees, what happens? It becomes demotivating because everyone knows that oh, if we work, this is same. This is what's come to come up. I've got it again. The same thing. I don't want this. Was something new that could be proud. That could be all uh, something uh, demotivating. Tangible rewards. Tangible rewards is what tangible. The word tangible is what you can see. So here we're talking of money, right? If you start giving money as a reward. Monetary rewards. What happens? It can affect the organization. Organization. It's a cost to the organization. Money goes off. That can that can be a cost. Okay. Now what happens is, uh, it is possible to run out of tangible rewards. Why? Because and manager, the manager of a company does not have the authority to. Issue a tangible reward. Some it's not you do not have. If you are the manager of the company, you do not have that right. It has to come from the bosses, the directors. So it's possible, quite possible, that you may come in, but you may not be able to give monetary reward. That is also possible because that's a big thing that comes up. Okay. Ah, uh, now what happens is if the reward is based on performance, right? See, there are five employees in your company who are really good, equally good, and one of them has just done 0.001 percent better. They got the that person got the reward. So others would feel demotivated. What would they say? Even I have put in that effort, or could be five of them at the same level. One of them got it. You feel that looking into everything that this person is best, so better than the others. So that may be demotivating also for the others. Okay. Ah, uh, now what happens? The last thing that comes up here is if you start giving reward to your employee on a regular basis, you do this, you get a reward. You do this, you get this. That can what happens? So it starts uh, having a negative effect because employee starts expecting. They start expecting similar rewards in the future. That okay, it'll come. It has been given. It's come. So rewards, in other words, when I say rewards, you know what? Basically, of course, you should reward your employees, but uh, see when you want to reward. Some of the rewards here, when we talk of rewards, we are talking of monetary rewards, tangible rewards, appreciation. Give appreciation. So tangible rewards come up when it's really an extraordinary thing that comes up. So it's not expected. Some special cases, then people get motivated. But if you start doing the same thing, then people expect that oh, it's going to come. If it doesn't come, they're going to actually get angry on you, demotivated. Okay. The last type of uh, formal power is legitimate power. Legitimate. That is. Legitimate power. When we say it is there in all the organizations, legitimate power. When we talk of the power, it talks about your position, power of your position or your role. So it's a formal position that uh, it comes from the formal position that you hold in the organization. Okay, it's what you hold in the organization based on your the legitimate power is your bosses, your bosses telling you. So you as a subordinate, you have to listen. To what your bosses say, whether you like it, whether you do not like it, because they are senior to you, they are just above you. Okay, so that's why we say that you have to comply with what your bosses say. Right. So other word for that's why because uh, this legitimate power is also known as positional power. You utilize your power, your position, to influence others. Right. Okay. Now, for instance, this, what happens? Like, like example that I said that we, when we say, if you talk of RTC here, like for us, like we have to obey with what our peers tell us, right? We have to report to them. We have to. Sometimes where there may be difference of opinions happening, and we do discuss. But if a decision comes and it said it's final, whether we like it, whether we do not like it, we will have to obey by. Or at the bigger level, when certain decisions are made, 
by the college college authority sometimes you will say oh madam this is not right you have said or so this is this doesn't work this is not how it goes but what happens authorities college authorities are above us they are running the organization so as long as we are part of our, this organization we have to obey by what they say so it's the position the power comes from the position and which is legitimate it's legally approved okay so this is what we have to talk about today uh, i will not go about uh, talking anything anything further today okay uh, right just a moment please okay so now my question for you is uh yeah, like i have the question to you now right now which comes up is do you have did you understand what i said or is there any questions that you have do you have any questions or have you followed have you followed yes ma'am yes, yes? Ma okay okay yeah i okay i see everyone said understood okay so what i'll do is like uh, after this class there are uh, there will be a short very short assessment since the first day after the the assessments that you had the big assessments i'll uh, it's a very short assessment that you have this is all part of your class participation i want you to do this and submit okay you need to submit at the earliest right it won't take more than maximum an hour and you should be able to finish it off okay and uh, please do remember next thursday when we have the classes and as decided already our classes will be happening at 10 o'clock okay so uh, that's because that's what uh, you all wanted to have the class at 10 o'clock so we will have the class at 10 o'clock so we'll have class followed by your assessment the assessment will be a situation analysis on this on the topic on unit 6 right so uh, immediately after the class you will do that assessment and submit there will be a time given to you uh, within which you have to finish it off okay uh, anything else you want to say is there anything does anyone have anything to say here no ma'am okay so i'll leave you right away no madam no madam okay okay so i'll leave you right away and uh, we'll, uh, that's what we have for today's class and after this just go to the uh, your classroom page and then we will you can start doing your work for based on today's class okay